Hello, everybody. Welcome to Supercharge Your Sales Funnel with Common Room. Uh, I'm Trevor Spires, and today we are going to have a fun discussion with between myself and Anita about how to supercharge your sales funnel with Common Room. Um, hey, for for folks who haven't I haven't met before, uh, I'm Trevor. I am our solutions architect here at Common Room. So I work with customers in the field day in and day out, helping to basically build different uh, use cases on top of the common room data platform. We do a lot of work with um, community and DevRel teams, but today is a special session focused squarely on outbound sales, SDRs and BDRs, and how they uh, get value out of common room and how they use the tool. Um, lucky for you, it's not just me they are going to be speaking with today. You're also speaking with my counterpart, uh, our latest addition to the SDR team here at common room, actually, Miss Anita Chung. Anita, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. Um, Anita here, and I'm one of the new SDRs at Common Room. Uh, just a little bit of a background. I actually am pretty new to the sales world. Um, I actually come from a healthcare background, but I was in like the business side of healthcare. So I worked with like providers and pitching doctors and like reaching out to healthcare representatives. And then I transitioned over to be an SDR at Prisma. And now I'm here as an SDR at Common Room. Love those stories of how people get into uh, sales. Like there's so many different paths. Like I know I know folks who started in like like selling computers at Best Buy, some <laughs> folks like uh, at car lots. And then so it, it's it's very fun how so many paths can lead into yeah. tech sales. So welcome to the club, Anita. We're happy Thank to you. have you here uh, you. and <laughs> and excited for the conversation today. Um, by the way, everybody, if you're if you're joining us live, just so you know, we are monitoring the chat. Um, today, throughout the throughout the session, it's going to be me and Anita just kind of talking back and forth about her experience as an SDR using Common Room. We'll share some tips and tricks along the way. Uh, we'll also be answering your questions, and we'll also save time for uh, a product demo at the very end to kind of show you firsthand in the tool um, how customers are, are using these wonderful things we talk about. So fling your questions away in the chat. We'll keep an eye on them and uh, look forward to answering those throughout the, throughout the session today. Um, to kick us off, Anita, it is a, I think it's an interesting time to be in sales. Uh, yeah. it is, it is an interesting year to be in sales. I've heard it called like the year of the CRO where like everything needs a business justification. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly the way customers are interacting with, um, like vendors and companies is changing a lot, not just in this last year, but over the last decade, it's changed a lot. So, um, anyway. I'm uh, curious to hear your take on like what you're seeing and what your peers, uh, other SDRs and, and sales reps uh, are facing as you're having conversations with prospects in the field today. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, in the SDR workflow, there are some challenges that come with it. And some of it would be like, when we're reaching out to people and finding the right prospects, there's a lot of different channels that we have to go through and where people are engaging. For example, there's people talking in Slack, Twitter, GitHub, Facebook, LinkedIn, you, you name it. And because of that, sometimes it could be hard to get people's attention and to come up with like the right message because whenever we're reaching out to someone, it's important to understand like everyone's different personas. Like there's sales managers, marketing managers, and everyone has their own different goals within their companies. So that's why it's important to come up with the right message and be effective. And um, another, I guess, challenge is like how lately the, the market's rough and there's a reduced ref uh, effectiveness of calls and emails. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's very funny. You mentioned like that, that challenge of like, customers live wherever they want to live. Like I, I look at my phone and I think about like, what are the like handful of apps that I spend time on? If, uh, if somebody reached out to me on, like I have a Twitter account, but if somebody reaches out to me on Twitter, I might respond in a week. I might never yeah. respond. Whereas mm -hmm. LinkedIn, like I'm on top of my LinkedIn and I'm on top of my inbox. And that's how I prefer to communicate in business. Um, so like, I, I think it's a great point of like, understanding how to meet customers like where they are uh, mm -hmm. and, and knowing what channels somebody prefers to work with their partners and business on exactly. um, can be a superpower and making sure that you, that, that wonderful personalized message that you send actually gets read uh, by mm -hmm. the, by the customer you want to connect with. Yeah, exactly. 
And some people like to keep it more casual and like talk in Slack, LinkedIn, whereas some people would rather just hatch it out in an email. I love a good Slack thread. Um, mm -hmm. I actually think I've even got some customers on the call today that I'm in active Slack threads with, and we get business done quickly in Slack. So I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of doing business in Slack for that reason. It's just easy to move uh, super quick. Trevor, I love Slack. Alex, I do love Slack. I do love Slack. Um, so let, I'd love to hear it, your perspective, Anita, on like, so there's like the, the challenge of channels, like maybe customizing the right message. Um, how about in your like in your like more tactical like day to day work as an SDR? Um, like, what are some of the challenges that you're you're hitting specifically as an SDR? So definitely, there is a lot of manual work with prospecting, which, which is why Common Room has been a huge blessing to help me with and like play a huge part in having less manual work. Because um, for SDRs, like I said earlier, you have to find the right people to contact, the right personas, and um, looking through these different channels can definitely be a lot of different work and seeing how your prospects are engaging. Like, let's say someone's on LinkedIn and they're making different posts and they're engaging with your product, but you don't know how they're engaging. So with Common Room, it's a lot easier to have this entire like list of who and how people are engaging. So let, let's get into that. Um, I know when you introduce yourself for the audience, just a reminder, uh, Anita was at Prisma previously. Now she is our latest uh, SDR hire here at Common Room. Super happy to have her on the team. And um, you, you, you are you have a unique experience of being an SDR. And in all of your SDR jobs, you've had access to Common Room uh, as a tool. Yeah. So uh, would love to hear about just that experience that you had at Prisma, um, mm -hmm. what your role was, and how how you use Common Room in your day to day when you were working there. Yeah, definitely. So um, I was very fortunate to have Common Room right from the beginning as like as an SDR. And at Prisma, I used Common Room every single day as my main source of prospecting and finding the right people to schedule meetings with. And yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Common Room really helped me by figuring out where everyone was in different channels. And it kind of lets me understand how they're engaging or like who they're engaging with. And it allows me to reach out with the right context or like the right message on um, the channel. And like with Common Room at Prisma, I was able to schedule over a hundred meetings within eight months of, of my time there. And I was actually responsible for 72% of the company's like total calls. So Common Room really helped me. Wait, so you booked, so 72, let's call it, let's round up to 75. We'll call mm -hmm. it. We'll call it three quarters, just because that's a that's a it's a nice round number. So you booked like two thirds of the the calls for the company through just through Common Room as a channel, basically. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how? Did, so like, uh, I okay, I think we'll get into like how you how you did that, but it'd be. I mean, I'd love to hear just like maybe expand on that a little bit. What when you were logged in? Um, like, what did you like? What was your kind of workflow within Common Room to mm -hmm. to start trying to book meetings with customers? Yeah, so um, it's I would say that it's it's kind of hard. Exp I, I it might be hard for the audience to understand as like I'm saying it, but later on you guys will understand like when Trevor's going to show the demo at the end of the call. But my day to day was going into Prisma's you know Common Room platform and seeing which organizations was. Um, you know, engaging with us. And it's really cool because I can filter out each organization by their size. Like sometimes I could filter from like uh, 10 to 50 or 100 to 500 or even like 10,000 plus. And once you enter the organization in the account based level, that's when I could dig deeper into the prospects and they show us every single prospect that is interacting with us. And it shows us um, their title. It even links us to their LinkedIn or whatever social media that they are involved in. And then from there, that's where I would reach out to them. And based off their engagement history, like let's say um, for Prisma, for example, a lot of people had issues or like had like some suggestions with some of our products sometimes, and they would put 
um, their comments on GitHub. And from there, I could also filter their activity and like filter the sources that they come from. So when I filter GitHub, I can dive deeper into the problems they're having. And then I could um, message them and like schedule meetings with them because when someone has an issue or they need help, they're more, they're more likely to schedule meetings for you, uh, with you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great point. It's like, I, I, one thing that I always talk about with customers is like common room actually it, it helps. It, yeah. Does it, can it help us like find where a customer is engaging and select which channel and mm -hmm. can help us customize messaging? Yeah, absolutely. But it also just heightens our ability to like, listen to customers. Like th now we can listen whenever a customer has a problem and we can engage to try to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm a like pre-sales engineer by trade. That's always been my approach to like sales. It's like, really, it's about finding a pain point, finding a problem, and then playing matchmaker with a solution. Mm -hmm. And so the more sales teams and, and, and any team that's invested in customer success can be exposed to the pain points and the friction points and the questions that customers have as they're learning a product, evaluating um, some solution. It just heightens our ability to, to come in at the right time with the right message to solve that customer's problem. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've, I've learned, it's funny. There's, there's oftentimes a resistance of like, but salespeople shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing that. Actually, I've learned that like customers don't really care the title of the person that solves their problem. They don't care. They, they just care that somebody at a company that they're interfacing with took the time to like hear that they had a concern and then solve it quickly and effectively. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, I've never gotten, uh, I, I've never heard of a, a customer upset of a problem being solved regardless of who, who was solving it for them. So, um, exactly. Yeah. I, as an SDR, I wasn't able to help our prospects with their technical issues because um, a lot of it came from like coding backgrounds. So I, I, I don't have a coding background, yeah. but because of common room, I was able to connect them with the right person and connect them with our technical support engineers. Actually lay, lay, lay it up to an expert, right? Oh, you need an expert. I, I know an expert. They'd love yeah, to talk to you, right? It's, it's uh, offering help to customers and, um, starts with us being able to like understand when they need the help. Um, GitHub is a great channel for that. Slack is another, um, it's a really great one for me and a lot of the, the go-to-market teams that I'm working with. I, I, I think we're already touching on it, but I think we should expand on this more of like, how, how do you approach like, you know, more, tra more traditional outreach, right? Which is like, you know, maybe emails, cold calling versus maybe doing, reaching out to a customer that has a problem on Slack or engaging with on Slack. How do you, do you think about these differently? And, and, and is there any like nuance around how you approach engaging with a customer, you maybe source from GitHub or Slack versus just going outbound via email or, uh, or, or dialing for dollars? <laughs> so definitely it's best to engage users where they are and where they already prefer to communicate. Um, let's say they had the issue in GitHub, then I would reach out to them on GitHub. Or let's say they already had a question on Slack. That's where I would message them on Slack. So it, it always depends on where our um, our prospects or our customers are. So we meet them there. Yeah. And, and what about the like, like in terms of like, so I, I get cold emails sometimes from SDRs. And it's usually like, a, frankly, it's usually like a wall of text. It's usually like, mm -hmm. hi, here's what I do. Here's a bulleted list of things we can solve. And then yeah. the ask is, all, there's always a call to action of like, let's book a meeting. Like, are you free tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Um I get a sense that approach probably doesn't work on Slack of like sending somebody a wall of text and being like, Hey, yeah. let's book a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, like, guess, how does common room help you? Like we, I understand how it helps you with the channels, but um, how are you usually engaging in Slack with a customer to try to book a call? Are you like, how does that conversation usually start? So it usually starts with how they are engaging or how they interact with us. Um, for example, like at Prisma, it shows me, it, it was able to show me how long someone has been in our Slack community or how long they've been in Prisma. So, uh, for example, there was one prospect that I was looking through the engagement history and I saw that they were with us for three years. So I would lead that message and just kind of show that we appreciate them and uh, thank them for being like a member or like being with us for three years. And then that's when I would, um, I guess, ask like what they need to help with and kind of um, go, move on from there. Yeah. I think it's like, it's a great lesson, both in just like showing general like empathy towards customers and mm -hmm. also like 
if you're into like sales hacking, it's just a fun technique of like, okay, if I, if I start a conversation in Slack, Slack is a much more casual platform, it tends to be shorter messages, rapid communication. If you, if you say thanks and they get back to you immediately or in the next hour, next thing you know, you're going, you can be going back and forth with the customer in real time and have sent, you know, 10 or 20 different messages to really hone in on what you like, what either solution that you want to discuss with them or what problems you can solve for them mm -hmm. versus versus email. It would getting that same rapid transfer of information might take weeks because a yeah. customer might only check their email um, once a day, or they might not prioritize responding to that. We're just for, for whatever reason, I think it's like once they've already responded and they're in that thread, like they're locked into the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that it gives you the opportunity to, take an empathetic approach of like, you know, Hey, thank you for being a member of our community. Thank you for asking that question um, to engage before, um, before you maybe make an ask of a customer, try to try to connect them with an expert. Yeah. And as, and as customers, like if someone thanked me or even like acknowledged that I've been with them for three years or whatever, I would feel, you know, really appreciated and valued. And it would make me want to talk to that person. Totally. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I, I'm starting to think I've been in some communities for a while. I'm, I, I, I'm, I've still haven't gotten that three year thank you message, but maybe, maybe somebody's listening and they'll, uh, they'll, they'll give me a nice pat on the back. Um, uh, so I guess we, I think we covered a lot. I'm going to transition to, um, like a demo of the product here in just a, a couple of minutes. I have just a, a few more questions for you. Um, do, do, I just and this is more like a theoretical question, but like we're talking about this within the context of common room, right? Of like mm -hmm. using context for the like you know, maybe listening more closely, using that context to personalize outreach, um, reaching out to certain channels. Like, do you feel like uh, like outside of just common room, do you feel like these are lessons that we should like SDR should be applying more more broadly? Like, like let's say an SDR is listening to this and they're not a common room user, they don't have access to a common room instance. Mm -hmm. Do you think these same sort of techniques? could be adopted um, by, by a SDR that like wanted to take this kind of channel centric approach. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, of course it would, it would take like more manual work, but you, you could still get some customization. Like you could go through someone's LinkedIn. Maybe they just started a new role at their job. You can congratulate them or even talk about like the events they've been to. So, you know, it's funny. I used to do that. Like before, so before I had access to common room, so my last job, I, I worked at AWS as a, as a pre-sale solutions architect. And a lot of my job was like trying to get the first conversation with a customer. Mm -hmm. that, and that, that was my, my, my the, really the only context point I had was like, if marketing sent me data, which happens sometimes, um, but more often it was me going into LinkedIn and like looking for keywords, like finding out what they posted. It takes a lot of time, like to stage outreach to like four or five customers, just scraping sales nav. Like it would take me hours exactly. to like get the context. And, and then that's just collecting the data. Not to mention, I have to write the email and figure out how to, how to can like personalize that for the customer. Whereas I think ju just having all the data aggregated in common room saves all of that churn and toil of having to run those queries, mm -hmm. uh, helps you qualify the customer in advance based on what they're seeing. Uh, and then, then the only step is like, cool, like, I know everything about this customer. I have to write a, a, a bang an email or Slack message to try to get their attention. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like it just gets, uh, for, for me, I get work done a lot faster. It sounds like that's been your experience as well. Yeah, definitely. For sure. With It really helps just to have a cons uh, consolidated view of everyone's like engagement history. Um, last, last question for you, Anita, is like, what, is there anything we haven't talked about or are there any other common room features or um, tools that you found particularly valuable in your role as an SDR? Yeah. Um, and you could definitely show the audience like during your demo, but, um, there was different filters that you could um, set so that you could have like a better outreach and like um, an easier way to prospect. For example, we have something called impact points and um, impact points is basically how it's measured how someone interacts or engages with your product. So the more um, impact points that someone has, I would for sure outreach to them and you could filter it from like the most impact points to the least and um, the ones with the most impact points, they're more likely to respond. So, and there's other cool features like segments and you could kind of organize 
prospects in different ways. Like you could organize them from target accounts. You could organize them from your AEs and you could even set alerts. Like let's say someone that is in your target account ends up switching a job or um, there's a new member that's not in common room that fits ICP and they recently just joined us. So really cool alerts like that. And you could just be ahead of the game and just reach out to them right when you see the alert. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think, I think with that um, and with the chat in the audience here from Michael and, and Vibes who are asking to see the product, I think it's a good segue to getting into the platform. Um, if you're in the audience today, like feel free as I'm in the UI here, um, throw further questions in to the, to the chat and I'll try to monitor that and adjust to answer any specific questions in the product. And Anita, same, same thing. Feel free to uh, come off mute and interrupt me if, if you feel like I'm missing something that uh, the, the other sales pros on this call here should, uh, should know about. All right. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. Screen share incoming. Anita, do me the favor of confirming. Can you see my screen? Yep. You're good to go. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, all right, everybody. I want to just quickly get you acclimated to the common room platform, and then I'll show you a few examples of how um, sales teams are using the data that we collect in their workflow with, a with like I said, an emphasis on SDRs. So just to quickly orient you to, to what we do in common room, we plug into company data sources. So what that really means is like social channels, community channels, as you can see, uh, it, it ranges from Slack, Discord, GitHub, um, down to like LinkedIn, Twitter. Basically the idea is, and, and we have more than 25 native integrations and we support hundreds more via tools um, like Zapier and our API is to start listening on any digital surface where a customer or potential customer could be engaging with you or your brand, right? So we listen on these surfaces and then what we do with the data is what makes it so powerful for go-to-market teams. As we identify individuals that are engaging with, like let's say a LinkedIn or a Slack community or a GitHub, we start to build this 360 degree profile and we've built a system that starts to break down specifically who that individual is, what their job title is, and where they work, okay? This is key because this is what allows us to overlay filters on top of the data. And, and, and if, you're, if you are a sales professional, you're probably used to seeing like some filter menu and other tools that you use. So it's a very intuitive interface where you can run complex queries to qualify accounts and members that are engaging with your brand. Just as a quick example of that, um, and I'll come back to this later in the session too. Uh, I have 20,000 folks that are engaged in my community, but maybe I don't care if, to know about everybody that's engaged. Maybe I just want to know the members that are in my ideal customer profile. So these are accounts that my business has said is our top priority counts for us this year. That limit that breaks it down to specifically members who are working at companies that my organization has said we want to break into. So this is a great way to, to leverage this member database that we build, but also our filters to hone in on interesting accounts that are relevant to, to you and that are top priority for um, your business, All right? Now, within the member view, but so I guess before I go to the members, so we build this database of members and of organizations, right? Within the member view, so if I were to click into common room and open up my profile, what you would start to see is all of the contact info for this member in a centralized location, along with details about how they're engaging with your community, right? So we talked about how you know modern sellers you know, are, are starting to take different approaches than just email and um, cold calling, right? It's certainly a part of your toolkit, but if you understand that you have a, pr a prospect that's highly engaged on their LinkedIn, for example, or maybe they're highly engaged on Twitter, maybe they even have multiple different emails where they've um, engage with you or your company. This helps get you a central view of all their contact information, and but not just their contacts, the context to know where they're most likely to engage. So if I go here in, into my overall activity view, I can see this particular user, Trevor Hain, is really engaged on Slack. And all, it looks like they're lightly engaged on Twitter and then moderately engaged on LinkedIn. So based on this data, seeing that they're highly engaged on my company Slack. Slack is probably where I would want to start the conversation of, hey, 
thanks for being a member of our community and then maybe referencing something that they posted trying to solve a problem for that customer but this view of the member along with their activity and the detailed context of specifically what they've said inside of those channels right so if i wanted to like i mentioned uh, this member is highly engaged on slack let's say instead of slack i actually wanted to reach out to them on LinkedIn, maybe you have a sales, sales navigator license and you don't have access to a Slack server, it's easier for you to do LinkedIn. I could filter on their LinkedIn and see everything that they're engaging with from my company on LinkedIn and, and all of the mentions of my company's brand on LinkedIn, right? So this allows us to listen better, to learn more about this contact that we want to reach out to and then craft a personalized message based on the contact that they're interacting with on in this example, LinkedIn, um, but I could see that engagement across all of these digital platforms that we have plugged into Common Room. I'm going to transition to how we, so this is how we look at this for an individual contact. I'm going to trans transition to how we look at this for members, but if anybody has, uh, sorry, how we look at this for a company-based view, but if anybody has questions on the member view, how this works, or how we integrate with your CRM to send these leads into outside systems like HubSpot or Salesforce or um, upstream to some other uh, SDR tooling, feel free to post those in the chat, okay? All right, I wanna show you all, so uh, one thing to, that I always think about as I'm working with customers is like, every company has a different go-to-market strategy in motion, right? I, I, I'll share our motion at Common Room is very much a hybrid motion. Um, we have some customers that come in at a very product-led motion, while some are um, purely engaged from our sales team in a more human-led motion. I'm going to show you an example of how we use Common Room to accelerate a sales cycle in conjunction with uh, using our community teams but also using our sales team on, and visibility into what a customer is doing in product and in community via the centralized uh, view of this account that we provide in Common Room. So I've got this customer here. If I scroll down, I'm going to take you to the very first thing we ever saw about this customer. If you look at the bottom of the screen here, on January 4th, May 11th, we had a first contact with this customer. Brian from this customer created an account in common room for the first time, right? A couple days passed and he started to invite team members into common room to log into the tool. And then a few days later, he pops into our community. Now, what's interesting about this, this customer example I'm showing you is that from this day, from the 11th, our marketing team and our sales team was trying to book a call with this customer, but this customer didn't, he, it wasn't ready to talk to our sales team, right? They were going through this community and product journey of experimenting on their own, learning on their own and trying to figure out for themselves what they wanted without engaging with our sales team, right? So they popped into the community, they asked some product questions, they, they received an answer from our community members. So what's happening behind the scenes here is our, our, our customers activating themselves self-service. Meanwhile, our sales team is watching, looking for opportunities to engage, right? It was this instance, right, which happened a few days after they initially created their room of the customer asking a question that got us the in with the customer to have that first conversation, right? Because after they asked this question, we were able to DM the customer and say, hey, we noticed you had some questions. We'd love to book a 30-minute call to just make sure that we understand your use cases. Um, from there, uh, you know, and, and the customer story goes on and on. They continue to engage with us. They invite more team members. Um, Lots of fun ultimately becoming an activated customer. But what's interesting about customers that we're able to surface this way that we have in our communities and then we combined with our sales motion is the time to close a deal is like super uh, accelerated. We've seen customers that come in in this community-led, product-led way with the help of our SDRs um, cut down our deal cycle time from what is an average of like 60 to 90 days down to sometimes less than a week. This particular customer um, had signed a PO within two weeks of engaging with us. So uh, this is just, I think, a great story and example of how we can leverage 
both like the individual context and contact, but also at a company level, we can see the adoption journey over time and look for opportunities to engage with customers at the right time when they're ready to engage with us. Um, now, let's say, let's say that I'm a SDR or I'm a sales professional and I'm logging into Common Room and maybe I don't have a specific company that I want to connect with in mind, but I'd like to explore like maybe what new companies have been engaging with us, right? So underneath this organizations tab, there's two really valuable views for SDRs. Um, we'll highlight the newest organization. So these are the, the, the companies and brands who most recently showed up in our community. So these are brands that were first connected with us in the last 28 days. This is a critical window, right? Um, personalization is a big topic in sales and go-to-market strategies right now, but equally as important to personalization is also speed, right? When a customer is starting to raise their hand and show intent signals and starting to engage with your brand, you want to reduce the amount of time between that initial engagement and that initial interest and receiving like help or, or adding value. I think the, the stat that I hear a lot is the first uh, vendor, the first company to show value in a sales cycle is most often the first one to win a deal, right? And so if you can get visibility into which customers are new, starting to engage with your brand, this gives you a nice list. But like uh, Anita was mentioning earlier, knowing which customers are new and engaging is interesting. But if I scroll down here, it's very possible that some of these customers that are that are newly engaging with us, oh, excuse me, may not be customers that I'm particularly interested in speaking with. Like it could be that some of these customers are not in my like ideal customer profile or they're not in like a high propensity to buy. And so they may not ever get committed to pipeline if we take a first call. This is where our filters come in. So because we allow you to filter down on this list of organizations, I can start to identify not just who are the fasting gro fastest growing orgs, but who are the fastest growing orgs in my ideal customer profile. So these are the orgs that are most likely to go from first call to being booked in pipeline, which is usually how most SDR teams are gold based on either the, the quantity of calls that you're booking or the number of calls that get pushed into pipeline. Um, and so this is a great way to pre-qualify the customers that you want to target and still get all of that rich context about who they are and how they're engaging with your brand, right? And just to, just to reiterate, we'll give you the historical context of how they're engaging with you across channels in that activity feed, but we'll also give you a list of all of the people at that company. So that way you can start to go through and find the titles and the people that have most recently engaged um, and, and, you know, it, in your role, you probably have an ideal pro, uh, job title or an ideal persona that you want to reach out to. This will help you to pre-qualify that and make sure that you're reaching out to the right individual at the right time um, in your customer accounts. I got a couple more uh, more targeted campaigns to show you here, but if you all have questions about what we do with members in Common Room, so how we would pull in members of our database, what we do with the data, and also how we organize organizations and the power of that for SDR teams. We'd love to have your questions. Feel free to throw them in the chat. In the meantime, I'm going to transition to a couple of very specific campaigns that we set up with sales teams whenever they first enable Common Room. And really what we're looking for here as a prerequisite is we're looking for a company to have their data sources plugged into the tool, A, and B, and, and equally as important, we're generally going to look at integrating with your CRM, okay? Because when we integrate with a CRM, it allows us to do things like start to filter down based on owner. So like, let's say that you're an SDR and you're an SDR that's assigned to specific sales reps, right? Um, if I'm an SDR and, and I'm covering the AEs, Brian, Claire, and Jordan, I can quickly filter down on the accounts that are owned by that AE. So again, it gives you that nice account list 
of who's assigned. And then I can layer the additional filters on top of that to further qualify. So maybe I want to know accounts that are owned by my AEs that are also in my ideal customer profile. And maybe I want to go even further and say, not only do I want to know the customers that are in my ICP that are uh, owned by my reps, uh, but maybe I also want to qualify that and saying, I only care right now because I'm, I'm going to go whale fishing. I only care about customers that have a billion dollars or more in annual revenue. And this is going to give you a list of your top tier accounts that have engagement with you across platforms, right? So I can pop that open and find out specifically who from Snowflake or Apple is engaging with my brand, where they're engaging, when, and then you know what to do from there. You're, you're all professionals, right? You want to try to solve a problem, connect, play matchmaker, connect that uh, customer with a solution that uh, your company is well positioned to solve. Now, one thing I haven't really highlighted much yet is, you know, if you, if you think about, I'm sure everybody on the call is familiar with like a traditional CRM. If you think about a traditional CRM, one challenge with a traditional CRM is we tend to have a, a single contact that's assigned to a single org. Now, th that's okay for as long as that contact works at that org. But what you miss is the historic context of where that contact has worked in the past. So if, for example, a contact changes jobs, you may be reaching out to them on an old email they're not checking anymore just because that's the latest contact for them that's in your CRM. Another benefit of Common Room is because we pull data from modern sources that allow us to track this type of information, we can build a list and really effective um, lists that use this idea of identifying people that have changed jobs would be finding like product users. So people that were in a past job were actually logging into your company's product and using it in their day to day. We can build lists like this in Common Room to identify those previous product users who recently have had job changes, right? So this is a prospect list of folks that you know have logged into your product. Therefore, they're more likely to talk and more likely to advocate for you as a previous product user within their company. And so we can start to build these targeted campaigns and then notify sales teams when this occurs. So I, for example, I receive an email, uh, sorry, a, a Slack digest every single day, anytime a previous common room product user changes roles. And if they change roles into a company that's for example, in my ICP or is in my book of business in the accounts that I cover, um, I want to reach out to that individual usually a, a, a month or two after they start in the role and they've got a lay of the land to try to do some discovery um, see if we can, uh, if they're a decision maker, I want to you know, start talking to them directly about how uh, maybe our product could fit into their new role in the new company. And if they're not a decision maker, they might be able to intro me to the person at their new company who is the decision maker. Um, and so this context of where users are going and the ability to get alerted on it in real time or as a digest has been a great source of additional meetings and pipeline for um, for users because again we can pre just to reiterate these aren't just any old users and members that are changing jobs these are members that we've qualified to say i want to know people that change jobs that have logged into our product ever Another way to do this would be if you have a list. It's very likely um, if you're partnering with a community team that your community team has a list of champions or of advocates or of like MVPs in the, in your community. That's another great pre-qualifier to know if a champion, if somebody that is a known advocate for your product just moved to a different company, we want to make sure that we're aware of that. So that way we can start to leverage that champion's affinity towards our brands um, uh, to to uncover new business in that account that they've, um, they've moved yeah, in. And just a fun fact, I know this works because my first meeting set, um, he was my previous manager at Prisma and he moved to Fermion and I, I booked a meeting with him because he used to use common room at Prisma. That's killer. That's awesome. I didn't know that it needed. That's, that's, that's really cool. So you were <laughs> able to find the, the job change and, uh, it helps you book a meeting. Yeah, exactly. That's what, that's what we're trying to do here. Um, you know, everybody, meetings turn into pipeline, right? So this is how we're supercharging that sales funnel. Um, well, uh, the, here's the last thing that I'll show you, and then I'll just open it up for general Q&A at the end, and I'll keep the, the, the common room app pulled up in case anybody has 
product questions. Um, I've talked a lot about this idea of a of an ICP, right? Well, I showed you how in Common Room I could quickly find what new organizations are joining, but the way a lot of our customers like to consume this data is actually just to be notified proactively whenever a customer um, that's in this set of customers like first engages with their brand. So basically when a new company in my ICP, in my ideal customer profile, engages with my brand for the very first time and enters my online digital ecosystem or community. So what I've done here is leveraging this concept of a segment, which a segment in Common Room, by the way, just gener it's where you get work done. Uh, it's usually that that list that you'll run through to qualify and prospect into uh, members or accounts. I've set up a, 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 a advanced filter here that shows me all ICP accounts that were first seen in the last two months. And I've, ev I've even went further to filter out accounts that are existing customers or that are already in pipeline, right? So what that leaves me with is a list of accounts that first engaged with my company in the last 60 days. They're not a current customer. They're not in our sales pipeline and they're in our ICP. This is called a list of qualified accounts, right? So now I can go through this account list and I can start to identify who specifically at this brand engage with us. Where do they engage with us? I've got a lot, you know, we have a great marketing team. So we get a lot of awesome engagement on LinkedIn. You may also have folks that are joining um, via Slack. Uh, in, this, in this case, we have somebody who joined our Slack and then also attended an in-person event in California that we hosted last April. So again, like we would with users who change jobs, we may want to get notified anytime a new organization enters in, in your NRICP that meets this criteria, enters our online community. That way you can have a constant feed of data that helps you make decisions on what accounts to prioritize and what um, leads are, are, are warm or fresh based on how they're interacting with your company's content. That is all I had planned to demo today. Anita, is there anything that you think we should uh, we should showcase here before we just open it up to the uh, to the crew? Um, well, I, I did mention impact points earlier, so oh, right. I think, yeah, I think it would, it would really help to understand like what we mean by that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank thank you for for uh, reminding me of that. So, in common room, we have this idea of an impact point. So, an impact point is effectively it's a weighted um, score based on how much somebody's engaging with your your company or your brand, right? So I'll filter on this to, to show you an example of uh, what that looks like. But as customers engage with you, so maybe they're engaging on Slack or LinkedIn or whatever, we start to score that engagement with impact points. Um, generally speaking, you know, it, it, it's, it's a good proxy to understand, like, is this customer highly engaged? So for us, I consider anything over a hundred impact points in the last 12 months to be highly engaged. Those are people that um, are most likely to take a conversation if they're engaged in the community and you have a solution that aligns with what they're exploring within that community. Um, and then on the, on the opposite side, this might tell, show you contacts that are less engaged. So like haven't engaged with you recently, but still have engaged with you at some point. So this is still use like, if you have zero um, impact points, this is still useful as like a contact database and you will still retain the history of how they've engaged with you in the past. In this case, I have a customer that engaged with us back in 2021 that hasn't engaged much since then. But it, as we're building, listen, as we're looking for folks that make sense to reach out to, finding those individuals who are highly engaged and have more than zero impact points is a great way to kind of triangulate your efforts and make sure you're focusing on uh, folks that are showing propensity um, and interest in your in your company and in your brand. Anything else to say about impact points there, Anita? Uh, no, nothing else. But another good um, thing to point out is that it's I really like the last scene column as well because you can show where they were last interacting with us, and that's where we can. Uh, reach out to them on the right channel. Yeah, I I use the last scene very liberally because I because like I in a like here's a here's an amazing scenario is like like let's assume that Angie is somebody that I wanted to reach out to. She's not, but let's assume that she was. Um, she just engaged with us on Slack two minutes ago, 
So she's probably in my Slack right now, right? So th- you're, you're spot on. Like, this is a great way to see who's engaged, like, in the last 24 hours or so. There's a statistic. I think it was – I read the stat by um, – I want to say it was published by Outreach. You can fact check me if you're on the call here. But they basically said if, if you can – respond to a customer within 24 hours of them engaging with you, you're almost 5x more likely to secure a meeting with that customer, right? It just makes sense. Like you want to engage when you're top of mind to them, when they're actually thinking about your solutions and about the problems that you solve. Um, And so I I think it's a great call out, Anita, of like understanding the people who have engaged with you very recently and that um, are already thinking about you is a great way to make sure that you can increase the likelihood that, um, you're you're um, converting that customer into into pipeline if that's what makes sense for that individual. All right, I stopped the uh, screen share. Oh, look, we have some nice emojis from Dylan here in the chat. Thanks for the fire emojis, Dylan. Dylan's Anita's boss, by the way. You can say hi to your you can say hi to your boss, uh, Anita, if you want. Um, <laughs> hey, Dylan. Uh, so, hey, everybody, that that's all we had planned for today. Um, happy to take any questions for folks that are sticking around in the chat with us. If um, So we'll, we'll hold on for like the next few minutes to see if any uh, questions come in from the chat, any additional questions. And if not, we will close it down. So I'll give folks a few minutes to answer, to throw their questions in the chat, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. It's a good question from Nick. What are tips for engaging with other teams while using common room at your organization? There's like a few different ways to accomplish this. Like in inside of common room itself, we have this concept of a team note. I'll show you, I'll show this briefly just so to make it clear for the folks in the audience. So if I were to go to this contact, I could actually open up this, uh, contact and, and say something like, hey, Anita, this uh, customer looks like, have you reached out? And then Anita is going to get a notification because I tagged her there. But also, we're going to be able to keep track of all the collaboration that happened um, in this account. So it's a good way to make sure that like the right people are engaged. I've seen customers use this in different ways. Like One, one way that it can be used is like some community teams say like, hey, we want SDRs to like ask before they do outreach. And so the SDR might tag in that chat and say, hey, I, can I reach out to this customer and like wait for the thumbs up from the community manager? And sometimes it's just strictly for visibility for people to be able to like communicate between, um, between teams. Um, can you th- what, do you, what do you think about the notes uh, functionality there, Anita? I actually like the notes. I use the notes a lot because um, it helps the other teammates like understand what's going on with the prospect and it's just like a, a good way to summarize what's happening. There you go. Heard it straight from the source. I use team notes too, mostly just to tag people. Like that, that's how I use it is like, I like to, if I find some, something that I'm not going to action on, but it, I think a teammate should, um, mm-hmm. or like I see an account that is engaged that I don't think an AE or SDR has reached out to, and I think it makes sense. I'll, I'll tag them so they get that alert uh, and then they can action on it. So I think it's a, it's a great way to collaborate. Awesome. Well, I think that is it for today. I want to say thank you, especially to Anita for the time today, taking some time out of your busy schedule to, to help the folks in our, in our go to market community. So thank you yeah, for that. Thank you so much for hosting this. I had a really great time talking to everyone and showing um, how common room can help SDRs with their, with their workflows. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks everybody who attended and thanks for the engagement and uh Hope to hope to meet you all out there in the field here soon. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody.